Delays, cancellations and severe overcrowding. Over the past few months, that's what commuters on First Capital Connect's Thameslink service have faced every day. The service has been so bad, there have been calls for the government to strip the company of its franchise. About 75,000 passengers use the line every day to travel from Bedford and Luton into London. So has anything improved? This report from Stuart Ratcliffe. This was a Meet the Manager session held by First Capital Connect. And as you might expect, after months of delays and disruption, the managers didn't get an easy ride. But how could you actually think you could get away with running the service with half the number of drivers? I've lost at least 10 days where I just couldn't get into it at all. You have been pushed, shoved. It's a bonus to get a seat if you ever get a seat. First Capital Connect has been plagued by problems. Firstly, new trains were late, meaning the company struggled to run its full timetable. Then the company went head-to-head -head with the unions in a row about overtime. And then came the snow. At one point, it ran fewer than half its services. This led to calls from local MPs for the company to be stripped of its franchise, calls which the government heard loud and clear. I'm only too well aware of the substandard service that's been offered by First Capital Connect in recent months, and this is a matter of acute concern to myself and my department. So, a month on, have things got any better? Um, they're very overcrowded. Um, I'm three months pregnant and trying to get a seat on the train in the morning is absolutely terrible. Trains are cancelled. You pay how much money for your ticket and you can't get a train. Delays, stoppages, cancellations, but now it seems to be a little bit better. I think things have improved a bit since uh, the end of January when the normal service resumed. But there are still problems. My train was cancelled the other night, for instance, so they're not out of the woods yet. The company has issued details of its compensation scheme and says things are now improving. We've worked hard with uh, the trade unions, with Aslef and with our drivers to make sure that we've addressed our industrial relations concerns and our engineers have been working extremely hard behind the scenes to make sure that we repair the traction motors that were damaged by the snow in early January. We're beginning to see an improvement in the performance of our train services on the route but we recognise that we've got to sustain that and keep on improving to regain the confidence of our customers in our service. With an election looming, transport could become a key issue, particularly in the commuter belt. So MPs, the government and most importantly the passengers will be watching First Capital Connect very closely indeed. Stuart Radcliffe, BBC Look East. And tomorrow we'll be looking at the plans to upgrade Thameslink, where work which will be costing about £5.5 .5 billion. Pounds. So if you use the services, we'd love to hear from you. You can contact us by phone or, of course, via the website. Now, it's been a long, cold winter. You could have fooled me. But it's felt a bit better this week, and racing fans can start looking forward to the new flat racing season, which is just a few weeks away. And that means a busy time for stables up and down the country. It's often unnoticed, unrewarded work, but this week One Yard has been recognised at the Stable Staff Awards. Workers for Sir Michael Stout in Newmarket were the big winners, claiming three of the major prizes. This, the engine room at Freemason Lodge, home to champion trainer Sir Michael Stout. The surroundings are glorious, but the work can be ugly. Early starts, long days, the stable staff, the unsung heroes in the development of a winner. This is Spanish Moon, and we're just preparing him for a trip out to Dubai. Horses are here to become the best, sometimes pampered, always cherished. But today, they're not centre of attention. Meets the British Horse Racing Authority's high achiever and employee of the year, who's worked in the sport since 1978. You get really attached to each other. You know, the more time you spend and you, you find out his quirks, what he likes, what he doesn't like, you know, and, and it's, it's that way that you can then keep him happy. Well, here we've got the racing silks. This is a hand and mac tongue. Over half a century, Jimmy Scott has seen it all. These are the most expensive silks because they've got gold wires on the cap and on the uh, sleeves here. Approaching retirement, he won the dedication to racing category. I've been to Hong Kong, Japan, America, all over the world. Uh, and I'd still like to do it again. If I was a bit younger, I'd still be doing it. We've got a wonderful team pretty here. You know, credit to them. It's not all down to one person, it's all teamwork. They're very talented, dedicated horsemen. Everybody's absolutely thrilled and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just so pleased that there's been 
official recognition for these people that are the backbone of the yard. They're the champion staff of the champion trainer. The awards have left them £50,000 richer and ready once again to take on the racing world. Tom Williams, BBC Look East, Newmarket. Fantastic. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Fantastic. And they're the unsung heroes. I suppose you could call these the unsung heroes of our countryside. Trees are essential. Poetry, that was, if you don't mind <laughs> no, me I thought so, yes. <laughs> Trees are essential for our survival, and many of them have been around for hundreds of years. Of course, now, with developments at every corner, trees are under threat. The good news is that lots of people care enough to do everything they can to save our trees. One of them is Howard Leader from Suffolk. Well, I've always loved trees. I was brought up uh, five minutes away from Epping Forest, and, and to me, they're just part of my life. They've always been there. Howard Leader is a retired science teacher who loves the great outdoors and more than anything loves old trees. And here at the beautiful Ickworth Park near Bury St Edmunds, he's sport for choice. Well, uh, one of the things that we look for are these holes, boreholes, yeah. which means that there are insects actually living in the tree. There's hundreds, thousands of them here. Howard is one of an army of volunteers who are helping to map the finest examples of ageing trees across the country. It's what's called the ancient tree hunt, and here at Ickworth they have one of the oldest in England. Estimated at 700 years old, it's the Tea Party Oak. You know, it's difficult to imagine how long that thing's been standing there and what's happened since, it's, since it grew. A lot of the time, the rougher they look, the better they are. Um, with dead bits sticking off of it, the insects seem to like that. It's a gnarly old beast now. <laughs> a gnarly old beast, maybe, but it boasts an enchanting past. The name stems from the days when local school children played games and had treats under its boughs. The main reason we're here, though, is not to marvel, but to measure. Got it. Keep it at about chin height all the way around. It turned out to be a whopping nine and a half metres. If you know of a tree worthy of recording, don't be shy. You too can play a part in the ancient tree hunt. Kevin Birch, BBC Look East, in Suffolk. Kevin might sight. even turn up with his tape measure. That'd be great, wouldn't it? That's a great sight, that tree, wasn't it? Yeah. So it is. Sun shining through the branches, what yeah, more oh, could you yeah. want? Perfect day today. And it's going to be fine and dry overnight.